let there be light, and there was light. Seems like everything is dead here. Okay. Seems like there's no power to anything. Now we have illumination. All right. Let's make our way down here. Okay. So let's observe a few things. We have some water leakage on this Burnham Alliance SL Indirect. It's probably because these fittings are cold because it hasn't been on for a while. First observation, I'm looking for power and that Honeywell switching relay box is not illuminated. Let's see if we can find the switch. Mm -hmm. Here's the switch right here. It's, it's off? Yeah, turn that on. Okay. Nice that the, now we have power. So we have a Burnham PVG. Yep. Seven. That's 110,000 BTUs, gross input. We heard the click of the thermostat relay. The inducer came on. We have a green light there for our low water cutoff. Let's see if we can find a temperature and pressure gauge. There we go, right there. So she's cold. Pressure is, there's something in it. We have ticking. Gas valve is on. So our safety circuit is good, but we're not igniting and Honeywell um, intermittent pilot spark ignition control. The boiler ran for a few minutes and then we heard some noises coming from the gas valve like it was opening and closing quickly and then it kicked off. Um, I got money on my ignition control possibly or possibly not getting a, uh, a constant uh, call on TT, which is XX here. We'll have to figure that out next. But, um, Peter, let's get the tool bag and um, we'll get started. She just reignited this first stage. Haven't done anything yet. There's full valve opening now. So, what's going through my head? I'm just thinking of what possible problems there could be here. It sounds like something electrical, possibly with my ignition module. Could be thermostat relay. Could even be just a bad call for heating. Listen. See that? I'm touching the wires. And... See? Touching the wires here, and it's not giving me a consistent voltage to the valve. And then it kicks off. We're gonna try jumping out the low water cutoff first. And I have the one yellow wire here, and I have the other yellow wire there. So if we look, that one yellow wire is on the G terminal, and the other wire is on my R terminal. So if I take off this white and put it right to G, I'll have a constant call bypassing our low water cutoff. So let's take this off if it cooperates, which it's not. Of course it's not. I'm trying to do this one-handed. Okay. Ah, see? Let's drop. 
about to drop our white from our yellow. Okay. So there's our white wire. Let's put that on to G. Alright, let's put that on to G. I'm gonna get it right to that little hole right there and you know what? I'm gonna see if I could just hold it right there. Okay. So now I'm on R and G and that's going to bypass our low order cutoff. Keep taking that out of the equation. Let's see if that makes a difference. All right, it's been running for several minutes and we can start to hear it clicking away at our gas valve. So chances are we're not getting continuous voltage there. And our status light is flashing. Let's see how many times it's flashing. All right, so we got the eight flashes again and eight flashes is low input voltage. So we're not getting the proper voltage to the control, well, at least that's what it's telling us. It could also be telling us it's kind of defective, but when I wiggle these wires around, now it's not doing it. You can hear it. Yeah. All right, we need to get a fan center relay, which is that thing right there. What I'm doing, ladies and gentlemen, is basically a process of elimination. Uh, you gotta think in terms of order operations and process of operations, you know, a flow chart of what works, what controls what. And if we're getting an inconsistent voltage to that ignition control module, right, what gives that power? We have to think about what gives that power. What's giving that power is our fan center relay right here, which contains a transformer with multiple terminals on it. We have R, C, W, G, and Y. All right, we have below that, we have our transformer, sorry, our thermostat relay, which is that piece right there. And by wiggling it around, right, we're, just, we're not getting a good solid connection there. So um, I'm not a parts changer. I change parts that I've diagnosed as potentially have failed. And in the troubleshooting courses, I'm gonna take a good known part, install it, continue testing. When I'm done testing, I can present the options to the homeowner as to what failed, why it failed, and how to prevent it from happening again. Pretty simple. All right, I got my Fluke multimeter out. Any multimeter will do that can read AC voltage. Um, I got one terminal on 24 volt ground, the other one on 24 volt. But watching those numbers right there, I wanna see if I have a cutout there when that uh, kicks off. I'm gonna set my meter to read min-max. Right, so right now it's on minimum, and we're gonna see if, yep, we're not getting consistent voltage to it. It dropped down to around 13 volts right there, as you can see. We're gonna do that one more time, this time with min-max not selected, and we're gonna see if we can actually see the voltage drop. We did drop to around 13 volts. That's indicative of you know, power issue, possibly with this thermostat. I mean, this transformer. All right, we finally have that ignition. I'm gonna watch our voltage. We're 24.8 volts right now. The system is running 24.7. All right, we're gonna watch that, and we're gonna see what happens when that, when that starts to click. Went to 23, that may have dropped down a lot more than that. We just couldn't see it because it happened such in a small like nanosecond. Uh, one more thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump out R and G uh, for our call for heat. And that's bypassing our zone relay really that's up there and the wire. All right, so now I have a jumper wire between R and G. Uh, that's duplicating our call for heat to TT. Um, that's also do, that's that's bypassing that the wire from the fan center um, from the switching relay, which is up there, and the switching relay as well. And we're gonna see if we still drop out on voltage. All right. So now I have 
my voltmeter on the 24 volt ground, 24 volts. My, I'm bypassing my switching relay, my switching relay wire, R and G are jumped out. I have my voltmeter set to min. And now we're gonna see if we have anything dropping out. Yep, heard that click right there, but let's see. Still getting the click. We are dropping out on voltage. My spark wire fell out of the spark igniter terminal there, but so we're not getting consistent voltage. Let's check one other thing. Let's check our safety circuit. There's that right there. That's our rollout switch. We have our high temperature control. Make sure all the wires there are snug. And it looks like we have a defective fan center relay. All right, I have the new fan center relay installed. There that is. One thing that I did not hook up right now for testing is our low water cutoff. So I removed the 24 volts in the common wire, which was our red and our white wire. And then the two yellows were the end switch or the contacts for that. They're not connected as well. This wire right here, if I put this onto G, uh, we're gonna have that thermostat relay click on and hopefully we're good to go. that on there like that all right and let's see if the problem goes away we've done the right troubleshooting steps we took voltage readings from our uh, intermittent ignition control module we bypassed the switching relay switching with a wire we monitored voltage going to the control and we saw how it jumped out we checked our well, we checked, visually checked our contact, our terminals on our high, uh, high limit aquastat, our rollout switch. We made sure that our uh, relay for our blower is intact. The only other thing that we did not check uh, is pressure switch going, coming to our, or going to our um, inducer motor, which is right there. I guess we'll see and find out what happens. All right, we have ignition. First stage is open. There's second stage. So we're fully open now. And now we'll wait and see. It is 9.47 in the morning on Monday the 27th. I am continuing with my troubleshooting. Still getting the same issue. I'm at the pressure switch now. I bypassed the high limit aquastat with a jumper between the two blues, disconnected from the, the Aquastat, uh, same result. Roll, roll out switch, same result. So now I am at the outlet side of my pressure switch. Our red wire is 24 volts going to our ignition module. The blue wire up there is common. That is getting 24 volts to the switch. And let me set my voltmeter to read minimum. See what happens. There it is. So we drop out to 17 volts fill the switch. Now we're gonna take this connect uh, our probe and connect it to our inlet common, which is right there. And let's see what happens. All right, 26 volts on common. Let's set the min max. There's our minimum. Let's see what happens. We have ignition. Our low voltage is 24.9. We have one lead on that common 24 volts in, the other lead on a ground. All right, 24.9. And there's that first click of the gas valve. 
cooking again. And as you can see, we have no voltage difference right there. Nothing. No voltage change right there. So we have consistent voltage coming in, but not going out. All right, so we installed a new pressure switch right there. It's a universal high-low pressure switch and um, it's wired. We have our common, our normally closed and then normally open, our positive and our negative. And the only thing that is not connected now is our low water cutoff. That's the, the white wire, which is common, the red wire, which is R, and our end switch, or our, um, yeah, the end switch, uh, for um, killing G when there's a low water condition. System is running. Um, good amount of time right now. So I think it's safe to say we can wire in our low water cutoff and uh, we've replaced the suspect, very suspect. You know what? Sorry. Uh, looks like something's going on right there. I don't know if you can see that. That side looks okay, but to the smell of it, it's a little suspect, but I was moving those wires around in here before. You yeah, saw it on video and maybe one of these little connections behind R and C is loose. Um, thing to know is that the G and Y are just um, mounting blocks. Um, the G is going obviously to our relay as well as the Y to our relay. Um, on the new and the existing fan center relay, we did not use the black or the yellow wire coming out of there. Don't need it for here. I'm not turning on a circulator. All right. So we just capped those off. So essentially, we're just using a, a transformer, essentially. Essentially. All right. Um, but pretty good, pretty good. Not so bad. All right, I uh, used some new connectors for our R, our G. I rewired in our low water cutoff. I used the Wago for one of the end switches. I uh, reconnected my, my ground and um, Let's get some power going here and give them some heat. They've had no heat since Saturday night. So we have Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday afternoon. Well, Monday morning, two and a half days. Let's give them some heat. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. Troubleshooting this Burnham PVG7 power venter. If you ain't testing, you're guessing. I didn't guess in replacing that fan center relay. Did it need to be replaced? Maybe it could have gotten a couple more days or maybe weeks out of it, but moving around the wires did affect our voltage going to the rest of the system, which then in turn gives the gas valve some voltage. Um, so we properly diagnosed a fan Santa relay failure, and who would have thought the pressure switch? Yeah. Pressure switch. I had my money on electronic ignition module. Peter had his money on... And I'm sure you did as well. Regardless, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, subscribe if you haven't done so already. We have 151,000 subscribers and a little, ch and a little change. Thank you so much. I wouldn't be here without all of you. Appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.